Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bothering the Band. Uh, I'm Dustin Kensrew, and today they are bothering me. Dustin, welcome to Bothering the Band. We're so happy to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Where Where are you coming from in the world? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Southern California in Orange County. Well, thank you for waking up early with us. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, thanks for shifting stuff to work. It's my schedule is crazy right now. We're uh, I'm going on a trip with my wife tomorrow, uh, and then I'm like coming back and going on tour. So I'm rehearsing today with the people that I'm going out with, and yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, but it's good. Thank you for fitting us in. Um, we're we're big fans for a very long time. My name's Ryan. This is Abby. And um, I don't know if Ashley told you, shout out to Ashley, but we got some really silly questions for you. Right. Uh, I I hope I live up to uh, the silliness at, at eight in the morning. <laughs> well, we all, I'm assuming we all have coffee. I have a giant iced coffee here. So that's awesome. Okay. First icebreaker question. It's about ice. What's your favorite shape of ice? Ooh, that's a great question. Um that would have to be uh, crushy nugget ice. Uh, like the sonic ice? Yes. Yes. Uh, Correct yes. answer. It's good for lots of things. Uh, it's great for tiki drinks. Um, so you can go to, you know, you can go buy it at Sonic, yeah? No. Yeah, you can buy, buy, buy bags of it at Sonic. Know what I'm it's doing amazing. later today? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wish I had a Sonic closer. I'm in like a Sonic hole um so i have to drive like 20 minutes if i want that ice but uh i actually have a like uh countertop nugget ice maker that i splurged on and uh it's a pain in the butt to like keep uh going because you gotta clean it out and whatever but it's it's really cool so it's like a it sits on the counter like a toaster almost yeah it's like you know it's like i don't know 15 inches high and a little less than that wide uh, has a little like it's just like a continuous thing you pull it out and scoop it and yeah that's fun i need that yeah that sounds like something i'm like when someone if i were younger i'd be like for my birthday i'm gonna get it yeah it's uh it's great i, I make a lot of cocktails and uh i was like i'm i'm gonna pull the trigger on this and it's been good approved approved um okay how often do you think about a little sweet treat because i think about them often i'm not i'm like more of the salty savory kind okay. of person but there are there are times when i don't know i can't i can't tell what it, there's like times when i just feel like i need a i need some kind of sweet thing but uh I would be, I would also be fine with it. Like if I didn't have it in my house, I wouldn't be like, dang it. But my kids and my wife have lots of things around and then I just eat them. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel, yeah. I, I don't know in my household with my daughter, we're always thinking about like, it's like noon. We're like, what are we going to eat for dessert after dinner? And, and it also plays into, this is a, just excuse it. It'll, it'll happen again. Uh, just dessert dreaming. Oh, there. There, you there you go. New album, desert dreaming, dessert dreaming. Come on. We are it's, a on it's, a, it's a common misspelling. So <laughs> going to be in there somewhere. I see des desert as dessert. And I'm like, are there cookies in the house? So. What is what is your desert dessert then? That's the real question. The, for me, there's only one correct answer, and it's chocolate chip cookies. Like warm chocolate chip cookies is my crack. That's not that deserty. You need you need like a deserty. Oh, are we going desert themed? Like a dessert, yeah. What's a desert themed dessert? We'll we'll all put our heads in here. What's that when you like mash up the Oreos or whatever, like dirt and oh dirt or whatever cup, dirt cup? Yeah, that's pretty good. You can do that. Your little uh, a little gummy, a little gummy cactus in it. Yep. Yeah. 
my instinct is if you remember the movie steel magnolia does anyone remember this film I, I remember it exists i never saw it well there's a cake a wedding cake in there that is in the shape of an armadillo yep and it's a it's a joke in the film great movie and when they cut into it, it's a red velvet cake and so they're like it's a mistake in the wedding it's like yeah so i'm gonna go with armadillo dustin can you wink yes not very well it's pretty it's pretty uh it's like a big <laughs> a big obvious wink yeah well i can't so the question is do you do you have anyone in your life who comically can't wink uh i don't i don't know that i think about winking that much but i i definitely not a great a great winker but I, you can't do it at all yeah, I just, I'm just like, it's no, like this. It's a blink. Hold on, it's, a, it's like this. It's a... <laughs> That's, okay. That's it's like you have an eyelash in your eye or something. <laughs> Do you say cuss words or curse words? Uh, I, no, I definitely curse if I was going to pick between two, yeah. Yeah, cuss Curse, curse words. If I was saying like, if I'm talking about it, I think, I feel like if I was in junior high, I'd say like cussing, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think I imagine my junior high self saying curse words, but that's what I, that's what I would say now, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that is the cor the correct answer because I'm thinking about this and when I was younger, and it might be a regional thing, we grew up in in Florida where it was, I said cussing, like cuss words, cuss words, cussing. And then it, when I got uh, when I got educated in college, I was like, oh, it's curse words. That's more refined. What, uh, so do you have any nicknames? Um, not a lot. My, my grandma would call me Dusty. And the only other person that calls me Dusty is, uh, Andy from Manchester Orchestra, but nobody Good else. <laughs> that's funny. So those are the two people that get away with calling it. That's, that's great. Yeah. I don't think I'd appreciate it from. Uh, I don't know. It depends who it was, but he's he's the only one that, that consistently does. I get it. Andy, if you're listening, come come on the pod and tell us about this. All right, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them last year, actually, down here in Florida. Um, okay, this is a real dumb question, and, and no apologies. Dustin Hoffman or Screech? What's his name? Dustin Di Diamond. Dustin Diamond. Uh, I'm I'm saying who I who I like better. I'm just throwing it out there. You can you can navigate your I'm answer. Gonna, I'm gonna go with Dustin Hoffman since I I feel like that's at least partially probably why my parents named me that. So. No. Oh, okay. I also think Dustin Diamond like did some weird stuff. Yeah, I could be, I I could be wrong, but I think he was like weird. Did weird stuff. Rest in peace. He's dead. It's true. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He died a couple of years ago. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Screech. Rest in peace. Okay. Um, if you were an actor, we're going to stay on this route. If you were an actor, would you want to go specific to movies? Would you want to go TV? Would you go Broadway? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um. Not a good question. No, I, I don't. I uh, I'm probably overthinking it. Uh, maybe I don't. There's something that seems fun about like doing like like most musicals. I hate, but if I like it, I really like it. Uh, so that could be fun. But I also just thinking about logistically, like it seems like a, I mean, I have to do this anyway in a certain regard, but. I don't know why in that setting it seems worse, but having to like make sure your voice is like okay every night, like 
on stage like i feel like that would be stressful so yeah imagine doing two like two shows some of the broadway people are yeah, doing a wild. matinee and that yeah that's like six nights a week too that's crazy um yeah but i mean it does seem like it would be fun so, yeah like the, the energy of like live situation like that uh, yeah i i can imagine um okay so in your home do you have a guest bathroom or a main bathroom that that most people use yes do you have i'm assuming you have hand soap in there yes what what's the scent do you know the scent off the top of your head uh it's the soap we use it for like body wash and i put it in all the hand soap things it's uh i think the company's called everybody mm -hmm. everybody um and i think that scent is like it's like a citrus grapefruit citrusy kind of thing it's nice it's i'm like really i hate uh super flowery overwhelming scents um so i need stuff that feels very natural um but it's yeah, i highly recommend what about sage and lilac see what i did there i see what you did um <laughs> yeah i like i would see if i had a sage and lilac one i'd want the the fragrance blend to be like 75 percent sage at least totally agree Lilac would be a nice little touch but it could be overwhelming <laughs> um you should release your own soap with that like 70 30 sage lilac i made a, uh i made a cocktail for like the pre-order for my uh record that goes with the record and the whole theme and whatever but i was gonna put a little lilac in it but i, I wanted people to be able to make it and when i was trying to source ways to get like a lilac make a lilac syrup it was not easy so i bailed on that <laughs> it has it has a sage uh, sage simple though well i must say i i love that song that song's standing out to me at the moment it, you know the standout song will change it's my least favorite but only i like the song a lot i, I think I like i struggled with the arrangement and now it just stands out to me but ever like there's multiple people I'm like oh yeah i really love that song so i gotta just like uh, let it go well that's so interesting because you're not the first person to, in the world or on this pod to like when we call out a song to be like oh yeah that's like my least favorite on the album or and and like for some reason that stands out to me love it thank you yeah okay tylenol or advil uh advil uh just because tylenol looks harsh on your liver i guess uh Agreed. Advil's probably hard on something we just don't know. Yet, so. Yeah. Advil. I try not to take any of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know. Any Aleve fans on the on the call here? No. Those are like the wor worst ones. Right? By the way, have you ever heard of a comedian named Zoltan? I can't remember of course. That. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, you, you remind me of him a little bit. Oh, man. That's such a compliment. The next step is to now we'll ha we'll bother him get him on the pod. What's his last name? I don't even want to try to pronounce his last name. I can't think of it. I think it's Kazas. Kaz oh, Kaz See. Kazas. <laughs> That's a compliment. He's funny. I follow him on the gram. Okay, have you ever walked done the thing walked on hot coals? And not walk the hot coals. I don't even. I don't fully understand how that works. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, there's a reason I asked that. There's a song or something. It might be a thrice song too. And now I'm, I didn't write down why I asked that one, but uh, but you know we're having a good a time. Of, there's a lot of there's a lot of fire in the uh, yeah thrice songs. I don't I don't think I have a hot coal reference, but I I could be wrong. It might be heat or fire, walking on fire or something like that. Uh, but 
Yeah, I don't know. I just I figured you tour a musician, you might be somewhere where like that comes up and you fucking have to do it. That's so you a common thing, yeah. I don't <laughs> we I like we... that you I like that you think that we're out there just touring and walking on hot coals all the time. <laughs> well, you feel I mean you might have downtime, you know, be in a specific place where that's a thing, mm -hmm. you know, some sort of attraction. And um it you know, you might get bored of the hotel or whatever. Yeah, I might walk I might try it. Okay, what's the coolest thing you've ever found on the ground? Mm. Coolest thing you've ever found on the ground. I know what this is from. Treasure in the West. Uh, um, <laughs> I feel like it would have to be like a, a rock or something, like hiking, find a cool rock or a beach, but I can't, I can't think of a specific cool thing that i found i can't wait till later you're gonna be like walking around your oh, house absolutely yeah and you're gonna see a shell or something you're like i should i should have said that you know? yes. um yeah, i don't know uh i have a i think it's not the coolest thing but it's like a specific thing i have a when we were recording up in bearsville i found like a stick like a walking stick kind of thing and you know shaved all the bark off and brought it home and it's actually in my bedroom like there's like a macrame thing that hangs from it but um it's kind of fun because it reminds me of that recording experience in the studio out in Bearsville and it's just it's a gorgeous area so that's fun count it I love it did you make the macrame or did you like send it out uh my wife bought it online somewhere but yeah and then like attached i like stuck the yeah the uh the stick through oh see that's that's exactly nice what a little going for. connection there to remind you of something um okay so the new album you talk a lot i mean it you know desert dreaming uh what's the connection to the southwest tell us a little bit about them yeah um so i mean i've grown up i mean you could argue that i mean i'm Technically, California is in the southwest of the country. Uh, there's a more technical uh, framing of what the southwest is, but um, yeah. So I, you know, grew up out here and uh, would go out to the desert a lot. Uh, I had a, my dad's folks lived out um, in the Palm Desert area, and so we'd we'd go out there a lot, and I just you know wander around in the arroyos and up in the hills there uh, as a kid, and um, really loved it. And I feel like over time I got kind of jaded to the beauty of this area. It felt just, it's all brown and just dead. And um, so I, I lived in Seattle for a couple of years and that like further made me just feel like everything was dead here. And then when I moved back, um, I just absolutely fell in love with the desert again and um, saw just layers and layers of, a beauty that um i had been missing so uh there's that going on and then i'm kind of using that as a, a bigger metaphor on the record too uh the way that it's hard to see the world in front of us at times because um it's hard to see it without um imposing what we are expecting to be there what we think should be there um and so yeah, it's it's kind of a, a two layer thing going on with the actual desert and then uh, the desert of our lives. If uh, if you'll go there with me, so we'll go there with you and we'll bring the dessert of our lives. I apologize to the listeners for that one, but this is all leading to the most important question: How do you feel about Tex Mex, specifically chilies? Chilies. Um, uh okay so i think if you're gonna go to chili's the way to go is the fajitas right because how do you how do you i mean i've had bad fajitas but like one time in my life if i had bad fajitas and i was really confused about it um but generally it's like it's just some nice meat and veggies and on a sizzly skillet uh yeah it's i think it's 
hardest to go wrong in a certain way. And it's just, it's fun. It tastes good. So I feel like chili is a, a decent, uh, a decent fajita. I've not been there in a long time, but yeah. I don't think I've, I've I don't think I've ordered anything else from there. Maybe in the Haiti when I was younger in the heydays of the baby back rib. I want my baby back. That shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would have ordered baby back ribs, but it is really weird that that is Chili's thing. I don't why why were they messing around with ribs? Because they don't give a shit, dude. Yeah, They're like we're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> They probably also have like I don't know. Think of think of another ethnic food that doesn't fit, and it's like, it, you know, they have great bagels. <laughs> no, all, all I'm those to were do sympathy is, laughs. No, I don't know. Those no, are I, pretty, no, that was a real laugh for me. That was a, that's organic. Good. Those are pretty organic. That was a good delivery. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you threw a party, you and you and your wife threw a party. Which one of your friends would arrive annoyingly first? Her younger brother. He would show up an hour early while they're still yeah, getting ready. They're, they're super sweet, and I feel like that's happened before. And we're like, uh, I don't mind them being there, but we're never ready on time. So it's just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I think I think family gets a pass. Hold on, I pushed. To, I muted him by accident. Muted there me. it goes. It's back. I didn't mean to. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I set my pen down. It pushed a button. <laughs> it stopped we're, we're such pros. I'm, sorry. I'm very good at this today. <laughs> like, like, uh, the we're Trace Commas so thing in uh, Silicon Valley. Yeah. That where the, mm -hmm. the, what's that guy's name? He sets the, the tequila down on the delete key. It's just deleting all the information. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good show. Yeah, that's great. What other shows are you into these days? Uh, I just finished the first season of Three Body Problem. Uh, so I, I've read those books. Uh, I feel like they're doing an interesting job with it. Um, they're do, taking a lot of liberties, but I, it makes sense because it would be a weird thing to try to make into a show. But yeah. I'm so glad you said it. I've been, we got to talk about this a little bit because I watched this. I did not read the books. I did. I I watched it and I I was into it, and it kind of petered for me. Petered out, and I was mm -hmm. like, I wanted. I just wanted so much more. Um, as a fan of the books, be honest. Like, you think we're gonna get more? I mean, it's it is a weird, crazy story. Uh, like the books actually, like it hits a point in the book where. It was actually scary, like in the sense of like scary in the real world. Like, uh, like after I finished reading them, I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. But uh, it like disturbing concepts that come. Um, I don't know how well some of that will transfer. I mean, the way the books are laid out, timeline wise, is is odd, and then they aren't great at connecting it like the characters i don't know like it's a lot it's very heady and so they've done a pretty good job like trying to break certain people into multiple people in the shows and bring them all in at the same time so it's not like you're you know, two seasons in they're like now this guy's main character you're like who uh so i i think they're they're doing some interesting stuff but uh i don't know it's it's hard for me i think having read the books to judge how everyone else is feeling about it who hasn't so i don't know i i, I enjoyed it though i'm I'm glad that people are like getting to see some of the concepts like the i mean it's it's definitely not as much of a payoff but like here spoiler alert uh when they're talking about the building the sofa on like that stuff like is crazy but in the book it goes into way more detail and it's just wild i feel like watching it it kind of skips over and you're like, okay, they did the thing, but it, it's, yeah, it, it's wild. Yeah. Everything they did seemed logistically a breeze for them. Like they're like, we're going to build this giant, very expensive thing. And then it's like, you know, like it seemed quick in the book. Like they're like leveraging their entire planets, like resources to do this. Thing. It gets wild. Yeah. Like it's, it's a really big deal and it's crazy.
they also seem to travel like they don't they don't do a good job of like uh the time like because they're like one second they're like we're in new york the next second they're in london the next second they're in south america mm -hmm. and they're like oh man they're that's a lot of downtime in that plane and <laughs> it just seems so sped up oh man i was itching to talk about it. I, I i want more that's what it left me as like i was like oh that's it It was kind of like a like a movie that ends with like to be continued. You're like you're like into it, but you're also like son of a bitch. I gotta wait now two years for this. Yeah, that is that is frustrating, but I I think it'll be cool. We'll see. I'm gonna end up just reading the books and like calling it a day. Out for the best. Um, okay. Have you ever had to work a job where you had to make a pitch deck or a marketing th like material thing online? online like on the computer you know um like a modern powerpoint i mean i think maybe it wouldn't be a powerpoint but like you know i've written treatments for music videos which is okay yeah or maybe okay. like a press packet mm. yeah i mean other people are working on that to look i'm trying to wink it <laughs> he's at like right he's now. like other people did my press packets thank you <laughs> no i i no, because then i end up like editing stuff because i'm particular about things but um yeah i feel like trying to like map out like all right here's here's some you know images that are trying to get at what i'm going for here's uh you know possible film locations whatever I, it's also terribly frustrating doing that because it's all very expensive so you're like this is what i'd like to do but i probably can't do that so <laughs> we'll find a, a cheaper way to do whatever that is <laughs> okay this is the this is a fun one do you do you have your appendix to my knowledge okay <laughs> nope that's a good response no proof good could be there i, could, I couldn't tell you I don't even know what it does. I mean, it never, it never, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you have a pool currently, or did you ever live somewhere with a pool, like in the backyard or close? Uh, when I was a senior in high school, uh, my folks moved, and they they had a pool at that place. And it was nice. So the most important question. This is really for me. Okay. How did how did they store the pool floats? Uh yeah, there's a like a they had like a, a rack. Like a Ooh, okay. A, well, like I guess it wouldn't I don't know if you call it a rack. It's like the pool, they're like the the floats that they're foam you lay on, you know? Mm -hmm. And you like stack them like toast. I don't know what else would Was be. it like one of those PVC racks? Maybe that's what I'm picturing. Yeah, that's like the right. white, and it's like, and you like stack them, or you can lay them over it. Yeah, something like that. The why are you wondering this? Because this is something I've moved from New York City to the suburbs, and this there's things no one ever talks about. And I, my daughter has like like three inflatable, pretty big, uh, pool floats. Oh, inflatable, and they're right. just always in the way. Like, what do you do with them? Same postscript follow up is uh well, a couple years ago, probably during the pandemic, we got her a slip and slide, mm. and that's something you have fun for a few hours, and then how n how do you store it? No one, t it's muddy. You can't get all the water out. You roll it up. So you roll it and you put it on side and let it drain out. Yeah, no, I I want you guys to do this. I want you guys to do it and see if it see how well that works. I had one at one point, but I can't remember what we did. <laughs> this has been pool float vent time. <laughs> it's true. There's a bunch of those things. Uh, I'm trying to think of another like. Um, this is something we talked about recently. Is uh, in the shower, like in your shower, you have like a usually like a little. You might have a shelf, like you might have a ridge. But you usually only have like a one bar of soap holder, you know? And if you have 
multiple people using that. It's like, why did we just settle on this small rectangle? Why can't we do a bigger one or more of them? I feel like you'll you'll fill in whatever space you're given. So if you had a big big shelf, you would just have too many things on it. It would be crazy. I, I, I agree, but the small shelf is infuriating. It is. Uh, we have a small shelf in ours, but then we have like a auxiliary uh, like bucket thingy on the ground. So I like it. Oh, we're having fun. What's the last uh, CD you played? Physical CD? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, right? I have no idea. It's interesting in, in and of itself. Do you have any in your home that you know are stored somewhere? The only ones I have in the house are like some old thrice ones oh yeah uh yeah that i have some of the artists in the ambulance we had like the original cd pressing uh had these cool cards that you could pull out and there's a die cut on the front and you, you could change out what photo was in there it was cool um so i have some of those and i have a few copies of our first ep which um is just horrible but it's yeah it sells for like over five hundred dollars online, it's stupid, and it's just a piece of garbage. <laughs> but there's only a thousand in the world, so we need to go up those bids. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to start bidding up and like, like getting at it. So like, someone's like, "Why are these going up right now?" I bet we could double it. Oh, easy! Yeah. It's all just me, just just multiple accounts. I've published a few books, and my first book is out of print, and. On Amazon, it says it's like a thousand dollars. So I'm like, why, why is it there? Like, I don't even know why it's there. But I want to like get to a point of success where I'm, like, I'm going to try to buy it and just see what happens because I don't know who the publisher is out of business. <laughs> yeah, what's what's wild? I don't know if you've seen this. Where like, there's things on there that you can buy for cheaper, but there will be someone out there that's like, this is two thousand dollars and. Apparently, that's got to just work sometimes. Like, someone's just like, yep, man, that's it. Man. Someone's really rich, and they just don't take a second to see that that's insane. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like it's got, it's got to pay off for that. That or someone's got a really bad idea, and they just keep going for it. <laughs> they're like, I'm telling you. They're like, they're like pleading with their partner to be like, I'm telling you, this is going to work. It's going to save us. Uh, we talked about the books uh three body problem do you, do you have a favorite book as a kid um hmm. i read a lot of uh so before disney bought star wars um there was a bunch of books uh that were now they're all called legend or whatever so they're not canon anymore um but i'd read those like in class in school, I would just put my arm on the table and like set it underneath it, kind of, and then mm -hmm. just read um, all all the time. Um, those are the ones I remember reading just a ton of. They're fun. Ah, cool. And and as a kid, did you do this thing to truckers that passed you on the highway? I mean, I feel like you would have to be a robot child not to do that, right? I mean, you never know. It might be, I don't know. I'm, it's, uh, we're just trying you to. You want to hear the truck horn. <laughs> well, I tried to do this for with my daughter the other day. I was like, do this. And the guy will honk. And uh, she was like hesitant. She was like, nervous. She's like, what? It's She's scary. like, yeah. You know, she's like, what do I do? She was like, really overthinking it. And then finally we were like passed. And, and she finally did it. And I was like, I think he didn't see it. And then, uh, there was a beat and he did it and it made it all the more special. He was like, meh, meh, and I was like, yeah, so you did it. Also, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> was she stoked that he did it? Yeah, yeah, we were all so, yeah. That's great. We were like, yeah, let's watch Over the Top now. I saw there's a guy on TikTok, a trucker that loves doing that for kids. Yeah. And oh, so cool. he'll be like, today it was seven kids. Like today was really <laughs> lonely. I didn't see anybody. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're seriously like just making like this kid's life, like mm -hmm. just going like that. It's great. Yeah. I, um, 
what we're doing with these dumb questions are just trying to get to know our favorite artists as people, you know, that's really what it is. Um, these anecdotal things, I think, paint a better picture than like BS. What's the inspiration behind this thing? You know, that's good. So that's where this comes from. And the next song or next song, the next question is, do you have any funky or unique, let's say unique Christmas traditions, either from your childhood or currently? Unique Christmas traditions. Um, there's one I'm trying to get going, but it, it it hasn't been consistent yet. But I I feel like Christmas Day getting Chinese takeout for dinner is uh, really where I want to be with my life. Um, but, you know, you're always juggling like which family you're kind of seeing at what time. And uh, sometimes that doesn't align with everyone's plans, but that's, that's my ideal tradition. Right there for it. As a member of uh, the tribe, I'm a, a Jewish man and we that's what you do you you watch basketball like my christmas i love it it's like no nothing it's basketball and chinese food that's it nice yeah that's cool i think you should keep going with that one yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try and you know it makes it e so much easier to clean up oh, it's a whole thing yeah yeah i mean i'm so i feel like it's a good contrast to do like do a big like do like a christmas eve like nice dinner do like a you know christmas morning like later do like kind of a brunch thing but then you just chill and then you get a chinese food. yeah absolutely you have a christmas album that's why i asked that that's great another one i like i like christmas music a lot so it's yeah. the only like um shared like musical cultural thing that we have really that's like th that's that big that so many people are aware of the same things and that comes back every year like it's really unique um i think that's what i like about it the most it's it's this shared playground in a sense of like oh yeah yeah i know that song oh you did a take on that okay oh there's a new one like it's um i don't know there's some there's something interesting about that the the kind of cultural stakes at play yeah no i agree and it's just fun. Anyone who's like, oh, Christmas, come on. I say start it in July. No, it's too early. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Abby's one of those people that it's like already with the Halloween decoration. Well, yeah. The, yeah they're going to try, try to sell you on things all the time. No. I know. I know that little front part of Target it's already has Christmas stuff. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, important question. Do you keep butter in the fridge or you leave it out? Butter uh, dish has like a little lid on it or whatever. Uh, so you have that. You, you, only one stick on that at a time. But yeah, it stays fine. Uh, yeah. If you're using the butter, yeah. Um, then it's not super hard. So totally agree. There are no wrong answers on bothering the band. However, that is the right answer. True. Uh follow-up, is it like a fancy like cut crystal? It's um no, it's plastic. Like it's got a tray and then it's got like a see-through like okay lid thing that goes on it. Um it's good. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect this stuff when you're like, I have an interview today. <laughs> what's the last thing you got in trouble for trouble for um, oh i did my, my wife was just uh using a little carpet cleaner the other day and uh i got in trouble because i apparently it's just spilled coffee coming up to where my desk was uh just all down, down the, all down the hallway and didn't realize it so yeah. how dare you how dare you okay uh we're we're to uh our favorite time abby's favorite time do you follow us on instagram boom do not. well please do i shall please do 
Also, this is the mobile where we tell everyone to follow Bother in the Band, all that jazz. Uh, Justin's Instagram is just his name, Dustin Kendrew. Um, listen to the new album. It's 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 T to B. Amazing. It's just a record you can put on. And I don't know. I I don't know how you guys are, but I love any album where you can put on and like do something and and then you like you're almost like brought back into it you're like oh this is a jam you know like that shit um and it has that vibe for me thank you i mean it's definitely i'm a large fan of the album format and i i care deeply about it and i um this is very much meant to be kind of a vibe throughout um you know there's there's variety in there but it all is playing well together. Yeah, absolutely. You got Pat Clyde on one. It's like so great. All right. So now that you and everyone listening followed us on Instagram, we end every episode of Bothering the Band with a song from our guest. So uh, what song of yours should we end this episode with? Hmm. Uh, let's go with Heart of Sedona um, from the new record. I, it's one of my one of my favorites on there. I like that song. I like them all, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I was rehearsing with the so the this band, the Brevet, is uh, playing before me on the the tour, but also they're backing me. Um, so we were rehearsing last night and today, but uh, that one was feeling feeling real good. Well, you're not done yet, so we got a, like two more. Uh, uh, questions. It, one: If you could bother any musician, live or dead, Tom Waits. Who, who would you choose? Who? Tom Waits. Good answer. And in the vein of bothering the band, little floats, Coles, stuff like that. What would you ask Tom Waits? Mm, favorite cocktail. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. I would love if it was a Cosmo. I would love it. I mean, the best thing though is he would never actually answer it truthfully. He would say something absurd. I mean, he, I think he'd probably shitty whiskey. No, it would be like, uh, you know, like Kentucky Gargler or something like where, like, it just you'd be like, I don't know if that's real, but okay. <laughs> like. Uh, it reminds me of like he used to and this even even this story is like who freaking knows but he he he, what he was i mean he was did real weird interviews in the beginning i don't know if you've seen that one where like the heath ledger's thing is supposedly based on like those old tom waits interviews like yeah ledger's bad or uh joker they were just awkward and super weird but uh one of the things in one i think a book i read about him he was it's it's probably only half true, but he would get into to town and like get in the taxi and and just say like take me to the whatever and he would just say a random president's name <laughs> take me to, take me to the the Hoover or or not I don't know like the Roosevelt um, and just see where that took him. <laughs> well, that's cool. I like I that. Mean, it's good as a story. I'm yeah, sure that, but he's he's great. Where does the myth end and the man begin? That type of thing. Yeah. And I feel like he it used to be real awkward and he's like, you know, over time found a very beautiful mishmash where you're like, you can never tell, but it always feels very playful. Um there's a there's really good he's he's always great on Letterman, but um there's this one where it's this great interview and he's talking about this horse doing art like cripping where it's like biting the uh the edges of its pen or whatever and so it sounds just like this story that is absolutely making up and then he shows a picture and it actually looks like this horse has made this thing and i don't know it's such a great weaving of uh you you never know quite know what he's doing uh which is uh I, i feel like i don't know if you've ever heard the story about uh gene wilder doing um willy wonka um and he only agreed to do the movie if, like, the director came over and was like, I want to do it. And he's like, I'll only do it if when I first walk out, yeah, 
I fall and I pop up and uh, the guy's like, what? He's like, you'll only do it if that, he's like, yeah. It's like, what, why? It's like, cause then you'll never know if I'm telling the truth or I'm lying. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like that's, that's kind of how Tom Waits rolls. Oh man. I just got the chills for some reason. That was great. I put on uh, Tom Waits for my daughter. This is October of last year. And I, uh, she, go, she goes, what is this? Halloween music? So mm-hmm. now that in my brain is next Halloween, I will put on Tom Waits. And that will be the tradition is Tom Waits. <laughs> I, I definitely had a, a uh, Halloween where I I just made a playlist of the spookiest Tom Waits songs I could and sat in my garage and handed out candy. That's great. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's so good. I'm going to do that next year. This past year, or... I forget which year it was, is uh, I had this great idea. Feel free to steal it, everyone, is I handed out candy from other holidays. So it was Christmas, Valentine's, Easter, all that stuff. Instead of throwing it away when it piled up, you just made a giant bucket of it. No, no, I, I bought it on Amazon, and I this was my fun joke to do. And all, so tons of kids... I'm going to next year, I'll try it and play Tom Waits. Maybe that'll be the connection, but only one woman got it. There was one woman that was like, wait a minute, are you only hit? And she was like, that's hilarious. And then like took off. And I was like, you've made my night. And it was at the end too. I was like, oh my goodness. That's so great. So dumb. Okay. Um, what's next? You got the tour coming up. Anything else you want to promote? Throw out there? Uh, no, come, come out to the show. It's going to be really fun. Um, the the most fun thing last night we were so like this record's you know a bit more like country western than the last two solo ones like it's got pedal steel on every song and um so we're we're playing some songs from my previous two solo records and reinterpreting some of them and uh that was really fun last night just some of them coming together and you know as like everyone comes in it's just like oh yeah this is this is good this is fun so uh come out to the show and then um yeah i'll be after this i'll be working on some new thrice stuff and yeah man this has been fun can't thank you enough thanks for having me congrats on the album safe travels talk to you soon cheers It's been years since I've been back there To see it one more time would make me awful glad So carry me home to the heart of Sedona Bury my The visions of the man from Galilee Along the way Lost my bearing I got swallowed up by the sins of certain sea So carry me home Stop.
山水。Shine true. 